Good afternoon, I'm Alejandra Ponce de Leon, and today I would like to talk to you about my research on nitrous oxide emissions from no-till dairy crop rotations. So as you know, uh, nitrous oxide is a greenhouse gas that is a byproduct of um, microbial, um, microbial processes of the nitrification and nitrification. Um, the greenhouse uh, global warming potential of nitrous oxide is 290 eight times CO2. So in this context, what we try to do um, in this research is evaluate and compare different management strategies that can potentially reduce nitrous oxide emissions from no-till corn uh, planted to, to corn. Um, the study site is the agronomy research farm in Penn State University that is located in Center, Pennsylvania. Um, gas samples were collected with vented chambers, as you can see here in figure two. Um, they were placed in three blocks of the experiment. Uh, the dimensions were 78 by 40 centimeters. Um, we placed two chambers in each treatment plot, and we collected gas samples um, from soils planted to corn after four different treatments. Um, here I, I mentioned the treatments are alfalfa nurture grass with the spring applied manure, uh, red clover with the spring applied manure, uh, rye with injected uh, manure in the foil, and soybeans with the spring broadcast manure. Uh, I also compared three different nitrogen inputs in the corn soil rotation. Uh, first, um, injected manure, then unincorporated manure, and a treatment with only fertilizer and not manure. Uh, so we inject the manure with this equipment uh, with a shallow disc injector. It applies the manure at 10 centimeters deep. Uh, we measure uh, nitrous oxide uh, two times a week from, and we did this in two years, in 2014 and 2015, uh, from May to July. Um, we also uh, measure the soil moisture and the soil temperature every time we measure nitrous oxide. And we took uh, soil cores, uh, three soil cores per plot, uh, to be analyzed uh, for nitrate and ammonium. Um, we take the gas samples at time 0, 10, 20, and 30 minutes, and with those four points, um, we calculate the flux using the linear regression model. Um, here I present the results of uh, the two years, 2014 and 2015. Um, in this figure you can see the time, the x-axis, um, the emissions of nitrous oxide in grams of nitrous oxide per hectare per day. Um, the T symbol indicates where the core growth was terminated. The dollar symbol when we apply manure, uh, the error when corn was planted and the letter S when we side dress. So this year we observed that the peaks of nitrous oxide happened uh, five to 10 days after we applied manure and the core groups were terminated. Uh, in 2014, we observed that the uh, biomass production of the red clover and Timothy treatment was significantly greater than the other treatments that were red clover and rye. So th this uh, because we had more legume biomass, we observed higher peaks that could be associated, associated with the nitrogen that the legumes provided. And also later in the season when we citrus the corn, we observed that the emissions of nitrous oxide were low. And this is likely because the corn was actively um, taking up the nitrogen from the soil. Also, uh, in 2015, uh, we observed peaks of nitrous oxide after the previous crops were terminated and manure was applied, but this happened uh, 15 days after we applied manure. And this was also associated with um, the soil moisture in the soil. So uh, we observed this peak here that was correlated with this um, high soil moisture. Um, also, uh, the biomass production of the previous crops uh, are here and 
the crimson clover and the alfalfa and orchard grass treatments that uh, present at the higher, the highest peaks in the nitrous oxide emissions. Uh, later in the season, uh, we side dress the treatments of soybean and rye cover crop, and we observed that the emissions of nitrous oxide from the soybean treatment increased. Also, when we collect the soil samples uh, to be analyzed for nitrate and ammonium, we observed that the soil levels of nitrate and ammonium were slowly increasing at the beginning, and then later in the season, when we apply the fertilizer, the peaks sharply, rapidly increased. Um, in 2015, when we were comparing the different methods of nitrogen application, um, the injected treatment presents the highest peaks compared to the inorganic fertilizer treatment and, and broadcast treatment. And this likely happened because the manure was injected in the in 10 centimeters deep, and it's a, it was a concentrated band of nitrogen and organic matter that had a, a, a higher content of, of moisture. And we also observed that later in the season, when we broadcast the treatment of, um, when, we, when we side dress the treatment of broadcast manure and inorganic fertilizer, the emissions of nitrous oxide of these two treatments increased compared to the when we only inject manure and it was not side dress. So, uh, what we can um, learn from this is, the, is that application of citrus nitrogen has a lower potential for nitrous oxide emissions compared to when we apply manure early. And this is probably because the corn uh, was actively taking up the nitrogen while it was growing. And then the shallow disc injector of injection of manure has a greater potential to increase emissions of nitrous oxide compared to when we broadcast manure and when we fertilize. Um.